for coming to visit. Thanks for having me. So you grew up listening to KQD. I did. Um, I you know, grew up here in the Bay Area and uh, listening to KQD, watching the you know kind of the uh, the youth programming of the day, um, like Square One TV and things like that. And uh, I definitely think it's a big reason why I work where I do now. Cool. And so tell us what you do now. You're at JPL. You're at NASA. I do. I work at NASA JPL. It's our site in Southern California. And what we focus on our robotic missions most recently was the Mars Curiosity mission. And that's my baby. I've been on that project for just over nine years. It's actually the first thing I worked on. And, uh, and now that we're at Mars, it's kind of been a fun mission of exploration. So what do you do? So you're in there telling it where to go, what to do? Basically, there's two really distinct groups of teams. There's a science team. Um, the scientists are really driving the mission now that we're on the surface. They're, they're the ones who are saying, hey, that's really interesting. Oh, we want to go over here. We want to do this. And then an engineering team, which is responsible for the health and safety of the rover, making sure that all that fits into the day's plan. And of course, occasionally we have engineering only activities. For example, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to put a new version of software on the rover. And that'll give us actually more functionality uh, that'll help us kind of make the next steps even go faster. And so on a day to day basis, we have a team that basically then looks at what's coming down from the rover, making sure that what happened, you know, we planned yesterday, went successfully. Then there's an uplink team that sits there and kind of waits for that fit to finish. They're sort of building a plan in their heads. Once they see that everything went successfully, they start planning the next day, or maybe we discover something new that day and it's everything we planned has gone out the window and let's take a look at that instead. Uh, Landing on Mars itself was... It was, a, it was a pretty exciting achievement. I mean, I cried a lot. Um, no, but it was fantastic. Obviously, so many of the team had worked for years on that to, to come, you know, to see landing happen. Um, but of course, for the science team, that was just the beginning. So what, I mean, what would be like, kind of the, I don't know, like the equivalent of like finding gold? Like what? what I've got to say, honestly, I think, I think we already did. I mean, this, the idea uh, that we could say, yes, here was a Mars of the past that life could have survived on, uh, that's such a a big deal to me. Again, just, I mean, we've always, we always you know Earth. It's one data point. Um, but imagine now you're starting to say like, oh, Mars is a second data point where life could have arisen. And then we're looking at, you know, Mercury and we see organics in the craters uh, of, of Mercury, Titan, Europa, all these places in our own, just in our own little space in the universe. Um, that makes it very exciting for me. I, I think that's, that's kind of the big finding. But I'm hoping that, you know, with, with Mount Sharp, maybe we can expand that knowledge of what the history and the environment was, and maybe that it expands to include more life as we sort of see on Earth, which is again, we're looking, looking for the, the organics, carbon and hydrogen, are those things there in, in abundance? And maybe that means that, yeah, this Mars was absolutely, you know, the place for life maybe at one point.